Hey Brick Maniacs, welcome back to another Designer's Desk episode. Today we're taking a look at the Swift Boat designed by Dan Siskin. Uh, Dan, this is kind of a, a refreshing change of pace for you a little bit. We haven't had a, I, I, we haven't had a <laughs> Vietnam era boat come out in years. No, no, they're at, well, there's, yeah, there, there just really isn't that many of them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, this is a, this is another riverine boat. This is the Swift Boat. So it's, it's been fun. Um, kind of like a size wise, it's, it's about, it, it's somewhere between the, the Moss uh, 15, the, the torpedo boat and mm -hmm. the PT 109. So it's, it's a decent sized boat. Um, it wasn't even really on our project list. It was, wasn't on our radar. It was kind of added at the last minute to fill in a gap, and it was really fun. Came together really fast, and uh, I'm glad we added it to our, well, and it uh, looks our schedule awesome. for this year. Tons of detail packed into that thing. Right. Um, first thing I should say though is that you are seeing it as built with the with the display stand and the bottom of the boat hull. The mm -hmm. kit itself does not actually have the the dark red part or this display stand. Mm -hmm. The instructions do come with it, but the the kit itself doesn't. Um, the reason I'm showing it off this way is I'll, I'll take it off and I'll show you how it really goes. So, um, I mean, I, maybe that's what we'll do first. Sure. So the bricks that are included in the kit that you purchase are is the waterline model, but then yep. the instructions should you want to build the stand right. in the lower hull. The the dark red bricks are are, are kind of costly, so I figured it would be something that instead of making, penalizing the, the the customer, everyone, if if you really want it, you can you can buy your own bricks. There's a parts list in the book. Sure. Um, and of course, the, the everything you need to know how to how to make it is all in there. So let's cool. get this off so I can set it down flat like the way it's supposed to be. Uh, let's see here. Builder's secrets revealed. Uh, I should also <laughs> mention that uh, I didn't particularly, I, while the shape of these pieces that I have here are the exact shape of what's in the instruction book, because it does the pieces aren't included, you can use any red tiles, you don't have to necessarily sure. follow the, the instruction book. So. Um, so there it is. This is the kit as as it would be built. This is a waterline model. So mm -hmm. basically, if you were cruising up the river, uh, you know, at a, at, a, at, a, at a slow speed, this is about how you'd be sitting in the water. At a high speed, you'd be, you'd be yeah, you'd have the front yeah. up out. Um, and you know, if you wanted to build a diorama or something like that, have it sticking out, you can build part of the bottom. It would do the same cool. thing. So you, you do have options. So this is the kit out of the box, um, and, I, and I, I did notice that the first batch. Uh, is actually bursting out of the box. <laughs> so I underestimated how big the kit would be. Sure. I decided, hey, we're going to use this box, and it's our traditional large kit box, and they are like actually bursting at the seams. It is so many pieces. So if you're one of the lucky few who got in on the first batch, you will have one of those boxes. Mm -hmm. uh, batch two, batch if there is a batch two or batch three, uh, we'll get a bigger box. So um, I the apologize about, for the One the of the best things about getting a Brick Mania kit is when you try to shake it, you know, under the Christmas there's, there's tree. Nothing. Sometimes there's no give to it. You don't even know you're getting Legos. <laughs> it is a solid block of Lego of Lego bricks. So um, I guess I could go over just some of the basics of the, the Swift Boat. Uh, it's actually Patrol uh, Craft Fast, PCF. So Swift Boat is just more of a informal name. Um, it's Technically, it's patrol craft fast. There's about 104 of these built of this particular model. This is the PCF-1 series. Um, they were specifically designed for uh, counterinsurgency operations um, in the 19, early 1960s when the United States knew it was going to get involved in the Vietnam War. Mm -hmm. um, a call went out, hey, we need to build this boat. We need to build a new a, a patrol craft. And they actually took a commercial water taxi that was used in the Gulf of Mexico and in the the like so the Louisiana Bayou areas over the in the oil fields to deliver troops not troops uh, workers to oil rigs and, and and different job sites, and they took took that and militarized it added the gun tubs mm -hmm. added weapons lockers or radar and all the stuff uh, that were military grade, so this is a you know this this would be a familiar sight if you were down in like Louisiana or the Gulf of Mexico you sure see something similar to this probably not the same color. Um, so the Navy built these specifically for Vietnam based on that boat. In fact, the company who designed the water taxis actually ended up building, getting the contract to build the, the boats. Which would make sense. So um, typical crew would be six men. Um, you have your, you know, your captain, your, your, your pilot, your, you have gunners. Um, this, this, this boat does come with uh, the, the guns as they would be set up. You have this this crazy twin 50 caliber battery. It looks front. awesome. Yeah, it's a gun tub and it's a rotating turret. Um, these are brick arms, uh, M2HBs, and you have to kind of put it together in a funky way. Instructions are included. Um, this gun in the back is kind of unique. Um, it was Love designed the brick for build mortar. 
Yeah, it was designed for the Navy um, in the 50s. Navy didn't use it, and they said, oh, we don't have any need for this thing, and the Coast Guard ended up using it. So it is a 50 caliber, they call it like an over-under gun. It's a 50 caliber uh, M2HB on top, and then below it is a breech-loading mortar, which is kind of unusual. Usually like a mortar, you drop the, the shell down the tube, and it, it hits the bottom of the tube, firing pin hits the the firing, whatever the, the, the whatever it takes to launch in, in the little rocket. Mm -hmm. And this is different. This is a, a breech loading mortar where you actually load the, you can load the, the, the mortar from the rear and you have a lanyard and you pull it. So the gunner actually has control of when it's gonna be, be fired. So you aim separately and then fire. You could do it on the fly when you're moving. Um, so th that's typical weapons that come with this. I think we actually have an M M60 machine gun as well. You, sometimes you see them mounting the M16 on the top mm -hmm. or any rail that they, they could possibly need it on. Um, you can actually, there's, there's a little hatch in the front here. Let me open it up. Uh, this hatch actually goes down to where the crew quarters would be. Cool. And sometimes you'll have a guy sitting in there and he'll have either that M60 on here. Uh, and then later on when it became available, they used the Mark 19 grenade launcher so mm. the guy in the front would have this, this automatic grenade launcher and a good spot to hunker down too right you're, you, can, you could actually dive right. down in there so this boat's made of aluminum it's not exactly armored or anything so mm -hmm. the the real defense of this thing is the offensive weapons and its speed so it, it, it can go over 20 knots which is pretty good for a uh, pretty good clip when you're in a river yeah right <laughs> been carrying that many people in, in fire right um, it does have a lot of opening doors you do have the the doors on the on the uh, uh, the bridge here that, that open both sides. There's another door in the back here. Uh, let's see if I can get that one open. So that goes down into the crew compartment. Um, and then you have these opening hatches over the engine compartment. So if you really wanted to trick Oof. out your boat, you could actually open the engine hatches, put engines in it. I did not bother doing that uh, because in this model, they'd be sitting in the water. So, so if you <laughs> wanted to take this to PT-109 status, you oh, definitely certainly could, could do certainly some of your own building. My, my, super cool. my goal was to make this more uh, approachable to the av average everyday person, whereas the PT-109, of course, is, is a right. you know, fully decked out. It could be done. I just, I just thought this would be more accessible. Mm -hmm. Somebody wants to get into the, the, you know, make a diorama or something, this would be easier to do. Um, so it does actually have a, a fairly detailed interior, and it's easy to get access you can take the roof off to the to the to the bridge cool. and then the roof off to the the roof to the rest of the cabin comes off fairly easy as well so you can get this thing off and you can get access to the inside so there is a somewhat detailed interior <laughs> um, you do have the, the 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 bridge here and you have the control seat their control area um, this is like the main uh, cabin I guess uh, so there's two bunks one there's actually a folding bunk you have a rack. Let me see. I can show you that from this angle. The bunk. You have some printed elements on there. The bed mm -hmm. rolls. Um, it does fold up. That's the way the real thing works. Um, you do have some navy beans, um, <laughs> which we haven't done for a while. Uh, that's kind of like out of our playbook for the PT-109. Continuation of the joke. Of course, there's a, what's, a, what's a boat without a rat, right? Yeah. Um, down this, through this little hatch here, would be the actual uh, sleeping quarters. There's mm -hmm. a little, the sleeping quarters, then there's a head. The, there's a toilet right in the middle of the room. It's, it's um, not much privacy, but I guess when you're in the Navy, you don't expect much privacy. Sure. So there's quite a few printed elements. You get the printed, the, the life ring here, two of them, one on each side. <laughs> So right. lots of other details. The 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 94 on the mm -hmm. on the actual. Uh, um, this would be the ammo locker for the for the mortar and the. And well, the, and with how easily those roof connections come off, I mean that's that's super playable when it's all open like that. I mean that's literally a little <laughs> PCF. Right, right. It's, right it's like a dollhouse. Yeah. <laughs> for your for your Vietnam figures. This does come with six, the six full six man crew. I just put the three figures on here. Um, Landon will talk about that, and it does come with a bonus. Uh, Vietnam era seal exclusive to this US kit Navy too, seal. Yeah. That's exclusive. We, we've done. It's not the only seal we've done, but it's it's definitely it's a, it's a variant that only comes with this boat. So. Mm -hmm. so, very very cool. Any other play features you want to cover in this this epic model? Oh uh, well, that's pretty much it. I mean, you could obviously you could build put it on a stand. Mm -hmm. You're gonna have to buy all the pieces for that separately. Um, they're all commonly available stuff, so it's not like you're gonna go broke or anything. But it's just you know, dark right. red isn't exactly. Uh, a run-of-the-mill piece. You can make it in red. You could also make it in in reddish brown too. So plus having the options always makes it awesome. So right, right. So that and that instructions are in the actual booklet. So whether whether you want to make the bottom or not, you're going to get instructions. So very very <laughs> cool. Highly playable, full of stickers and printed elements, and a fully printed crew. So for that, let's kick it over to Landon right here and hear a little bit more about the Swift Boat crew. All right. Hey, thanks. Um, this is quite the massive crew we got with this kit. It's it's always fun getting to work on these bigger models. 
Um, and, like, like this is kind of reminds me of the PT-109. Um, just you have this huge crew, so you can get kind of a ton of personality into it. Um, I guess starting on the left, I've, some of this artwork, um, we've done a lot, done some previous Vietnam minifigures, so obviously there's gonna be some similar gear from the era. Um, we got starting on uh, this side, we have, um, it's, it's a brand new artwork for that uh, flak jacket. It's actually kind of an opened up design, um, but similar to the previous uh, flak jacket I have. I, I kind of like this one because it's got some nice side printing on there to kind of to simulate that sort of lace up uh, size adjustable flak jacket. Um, this is, uh, you've seen this guy before actually, he's from the ACAV crew. Yeah. Um, so kind of making, making his appearance back in this kit. Uh, moving on, another guy. I like guy. those transitions yeah. though, because it's kind of like, you know, they're all from the Vietnam era, and so there would have been more than one person who looked incredibly similar to, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, they all wore the same thing and were dressed in the same way, so. Yeah, I mean, going over some of those photographs, um, especially on this guy, those glasses were just, to, to me, they really stood out for that from that era. Um, and I think the kind of, it captures that look. You get these young kids that are out in the battlefield and um, with these giant military issue got, like goggles on their sure. face, you know? Uh, so he's got that same flak jacket um, as the previous guy, and um, this one's buttoned up, and he's got that uh, it's a, like a low light flashlight on there with a little plastic cover, so it doesn't give off too much light. A little red cover on there. Um, moving on, this one I'm pretty excited about. So yeah, that is that yeah, is awesome. I'm happy for this one. Um, Tiger Stripe is one of my favorite camouflage. So this is kind of like a regionally produced uh, camouflage, um, and uh, the guys when they got over over there they would uh, acquire um, a uniform uh, in this camouflage scheme it was kind of popular um, but a lot of different different subtle variants of this camouflage design um, just because I think you had a couple different factories making it mm -hmm. over there um, pretty good camouflage actually um, for that time period um, and you occasionally see it kind of popping up today in like yeah. desert color even mm -hmm. so I mean, think about a dark you know broken jungle looking into the foliage yeah. it, it looks a lot like that but one of one of my favorite camouflage designs again um, we're color shifting to for starting with a dark tan base we're, do, we're adding a little bit of olive um, I thought the, I've had a, a previous minifigures uh, where I tried to make some uh, where I made the uh, tiger stripe camo and that started on an olive base color this one I opted to go with the dark tan base just so it's not quite as a, a, a vibrant of an olive, it's sure. a little more um, washed out, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that captured it pretty nicely. So again, I, I kept this guy a super simple. I mean, it's, there's he's not even doesn't even have a pistol belt or anything, so it's purely just this uh, um, tiger stripe uniform. So. Is he marked as the CO or just kind of supposed to be the the CO? Fair you know, enough. It's make make your, your own, own story. I didn't have anything too specific for these guys, so yeah, make your make your own uh, story up here. Um, then moving on, you get to two guys, and they're both, uh, they've been working hard, so they got that tank top on with that simulated uh, sweat, which is uh, kind of a funny detail. We joked about that initially. I think on the, on the PT boat, um, that was the first time that we had the like, pit stains. Simulated on the sweaty guys. pits. So nice. that was kind of funny. Hey, it's hot there, man, oh, especially yeah, yeah. if you're one of the guys working underneath. It's going to be right. warm. Uh, again, tiger stripe uh, trousers there, and this guy's just got the regular fatigues. Um, some more custom face artwork on there. And yeah, that's that's the kind of the base crew right there. Mm -hmm. And we're super excited to get this guy along with this kit. So this is kit exclusive uh, Navy SEALs. Um, and uh, man, where do I begin? I, it's I don't know. That gun, so awesome. Okay. Yeah, let's start with the <laughs> this stoner, is, huh? We've been asking Will from Brick Arms uh, for the stoner 63 for, I mean, I guess since I started working here, I was like, man, you should make this gun. Um, I guess it's, it's you know similar to the M M60 in like in terms of like at first glance, right? Mm -hmm. um, but so maybe that's why he's held off for a while. But now we finally you know it's been it's time to make this. So um, yeah, the, M the 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 Stoner 63 really interesting um, uh, gun for that period. Um, weren't a whole lot made. Uh, more just kind of reserved for the Navy SEALs, Special Forces. Um, I think some Marines got them. Um, kind of a cool, cool uh, weapon though. A lot of different configurations that you'd see. So it was able to um, switch from the regular like stick ma stick magazines on the bottom. You'd see Marines using using that. This configuration is the drum or is mm -hmm. the box magazine. There, it also would work for a drum magazine, and you could belt feed it, and you could load it from the top, kind of like a Bren gun. This thing wow. was just like a weirdly modular uh, weapon for the time period. So. Um, 
pretty popular among the SEALs. This seemed to be the most popular configuration with that box mag down there, and they could also load it with the uh, ammo belts like you'd see on this guy, which is the standalone minifigure. So he's right. got the ammo belts around his chest, uh, like you'd see those Navy SEALs wearing. Um, going back to this guy. Um, so just to clarify real quick here, that one that Landon was just pointing at, that is the standalone yes. Navy SEAL, Vietnam era Navy SEAL, and the other one is exclusive, this is exclusive. to the Swift boat. Correct, correct. Um, so going back to the kit exclusive SEAL, he's also wearing that um, life preserver, a lot of unique gear that I was seeing on these guys. Um, so it's, it's um, I think it's like a CO2 canister or some sort of com like compressed, yeah, compressed CO2 probably, that you could pull a string and it would inflate this life vest oh, sure. around his neck. Or I think you could probably inflate it um, just by like blowing into a tube, I think. I think they have that on there as well. But um, from what I'd hear is they would attach like a net sometimes to the front of the uh, swift boat. And these guys would like swim out and the boat would like pick them up and they'd grab onto the net. And it was just some, some crazy operation that th these guys would do. They were just known wow. for that. Just crazy operations. Um, wearing blue jeans was his, which I just thought was, I mean, where else do you really see That's that? That's awesome. Right? So I guess the, uh, the thought behind that was um, blue jeans were more durable than the uniforms that they could get a hold of. It was less likely to, um, in the event of it getting caught on something, it, it wouldn't make as loud of a ripping noise. Apparently. Sure. Apparently. Interesting. Um, and I mean, also, they, who else is allowed to wear blue jeans? So. Except for seals. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Tried so and true. I think that might have a little bit to do with it. Uh, you'd see them in different uh, shoe configuration, configurations as well. Uh, he is wearing some canvas sneakers, uh, which again is one of those more, you don't really see that anywhere else. So uh, maybe the thought behind that is, more, uh, it's, it's faster to dry. Um, quiet, probably. Quiet. You Not might clunky. be able to fit them into your um, your fins when you're swimming, actually. So these guys would be able to, would be swimming around. That makes around. sense. Not positive if that if if this particular configuration would be going around with uh, with his uh, fins, but you know. Hey, if you know, drop it in the comments and, and let yeah. us know. We're so, speculating. Um, also, again, since they are sort of like a special forces, uh, the regulations for facial hair were probably not as strictly enforced. So we have this this big old what a handlebar Fu Manchu thing or whatever <laughs> it's called, um, and uh, yeah, big old handlebar mustache and uh, some face camouflage going on there. So he's just just prior to battle. Um, other than that, some uh, ammo pouches and around the back. Um, let's see what's on the back. On the back you have a combat knife and, oh, I almost forgot. On his leg is the Hush Puppy. So it's a MK-22, I think it is, uh, pistol. So mm -hmm. specific for the Navy SEALs. Uh, it had this huge canister on the end with like a like a plastic seal on the end to keep it the water out. But Super it was a silencer. Quiet, yep. So a silenced pistol uh, that was exclusive to the Navy SEALs, from what I could tell. Um, just a huge holster for that thing too. It's like this giant pistol. So um, really, really cool uh, minifigure that I've been kind of waiting to make for quite a while now. So I'm very excited that we finally got the opportunity to make it, and I think it's a really awesome addition to this kit. Um, yeah, kick it back over to you. And so there we have it. That is the designer's desk for the Swift Boat, this crew of seven, uh, and all the cool features that uh, Dan went over. Make sure to drop in the comments. Let us know what you think of this model. Otherwise, tune in next time. Ooh. They're on the boat now. <laughs> That's perfect.